thanks so much for joining us for another edition of the Bloody Legends with Jai, that Aussie metal guy, and Jim Taylor. Brought to you by Crank.com. Make sure you're a bloody legend and hit that like and subscribe. G'day, how you going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here. One half of the Bloody Legends and my other half and partner in crime is Mr. Jim Taylor, JB Taylor over there. Today, tonight, wherever you are in the world, it was a great pleasure that we're getting to have a chat with Donella Drive out of San Antonio, who have been known for their unique blend of alt metal, post-hardcore and prog rock. The band does consist at the moment of Aiden Escalante, Andrew, yourself there. We got Stephen Rodriguez mm-hmm. as well. Their latest single, Simeon Transmission, did come out a couple of weeks ago. It is a powerful track that delves into themes of mental chaos, societal disconnection, and also sets the stage for their upcoming full-length Axon, which is slated for release early 2025. Over the years, Donella Drivers toured extensively, sharing the stages with legendary acts such as Megadeth, we were talking about thrash metal before, Deftones, Scorpions, mm-hmm. as well as Dead Poet Society and also Protest the Hero, just to name a few. Andrew, cheers mm-hmm. for joining me, my friend. <laughs> so, thank you for having me, seriously. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. <laughs> Absolute bloody pleasure, man. First off, can you tell me all about the beginnings of Donella Drive because I know you kind of, I think you started as a four piece and you've kind of gone through a little bit of a change there, but tell me about the beginning of the band, how it kind of all started. Oh, okay. So I was in the, like a metal band at the time and that band came to an end. And then my brother, he's a few years younger than me. We're like nine years apart, actually. Um, he got really good at guitar and I was like, I think you're ready to be in a band, dude. Like, I think you could do it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man. Like we started jamming and writing songs together. It was just me, uh, my brother. Uh, my brother's actually Aiden uh, Escalante. Yes. Well, we're half brothers. But okay. um, yeah, so we started writing the songs together, and then we actually at the time we had a, a second guitar player. So it was just us three writing in this like, like back house behind like you know our main house, and uh, yeah, so we wrote for like a year, wrote songs for a year, and then um, started. Then we found a drummer finally, and then we went through like couple singers we had we even had a female singer at one point we had two female singers, singers actually they said and then eventually my brother's like you know what i'm just gonna go i'm gonna i, I want to sing he's like i want to do it i want to go for it so he's been singing for the past six years yeah, yeah he did pretty he, much outstanding. 2020 mm-hmm. i believe he did step in we will we, we'll, we'll jump into yeah. that what, what was those early days like kind of getting the grassroots and forming those bones of the band as well and kind of getting your sound because I was chatting to Jim and like the early mm. stuff was really good and you could hear your sound starting to develop a- and evolve. And I believe with Aiden kind of stepping up and taking the reins on vocals mm. is we're able to kindly finally start going towards a vision you were working on, I suppose, with the early stuff. Hey, eh? tell me all about that. Um, Oh yeah. I would say the earlier stuff was like, I don't want to say poppier, but uh, it was more to the point, a little more simple. And I think uh, as we kind of grew as you know musicians and started getting into like different styles of music, they all kind of like blend in. You know, we love our our thrash metal. We love our you know we love all kinds of stuff. We love our funk. We love our hip hop. We love our just just weird like you know like we love like um we grew up on uh, like Mr. Bungle, Mike Patton stuff too. So we love that stuff. You know what I mean? So we just kind of like incorporate all of our different kind of uh things we're into and then it's kind of what, we, what you hear now but like i said earlier on like i think i think it was because my brother was so young too you know he said i don't want to say he was limited but he was um kind of just learning how to be in a band you know essentially you know what i mean so he kind of just kind of wrote you know a little bit more simple but now it's getting crazy i think it's getting crazy <laughs> almost too crazy <laughs> but no it's awesome i love it Definitely still growing. Did I get lost? No, no, no. You're definitely still growing there. Um, You can definitely hear the the growth in the band and the evolution to what it is now. It's absolutely unreal. But I want to talk about you as a bass player because me and Jim were mentioning about this. Tell me how you first got into bass, man, and some of the people that kind of influenced and inspire you because I think you fucking... I love the way you play your bass, man. If anyone's seen yes. the live footage, you go for it, man. It's unreal. So, so, so tell me about hey. your beginnings as a bassist, because I'm pretty keen on that side as well. Okay, I'll go right at the beginning, man. I was like 11 years old. My grandpa, one day he asked me, he's like, hey, uh, I want to buy you an instrument. Um, what do you want to play? And I was like, I don't know, drums. Like, I didn't even know. I was only 11. And sure. he 
bass was like, no, I'm going to buy you a bass. And I was like, what's a bass? Like, I didn't even know. Like, I just need like, yeah. you know, the guitar and drums. That's it. And he's like, and he, he's like, I'm going to buy you a bass. I was like, okay. So one day he just shows up to my house with like this little like pawn shop bass amp. And ba like he's, he pretty much went to a pawn shop and was like, here, um, I want that and brought it to me. And I've been playing ever since. Like uh, I started off, I was a huge, like, you know, like Metallica nerd. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I said, 11 years old, but that was like the first band I really liked. And then as I like got into um, playing, I got into different bands, of course, your Fleas and Les Claypool. Like the first CD I ever bought was a uh, Tales from the Punch Bowl of, oh, by, yeah. by Primist. Um, great, great record. Great yeah. record. Yeah, blew my mind. And I was like, I think I was like nine, nine years old. And then I used to listen, I used to, yeah. listen to it randomly, like, because my, my uncle convinced me to buy it. I was like, okay, sure. You know what I mean? And then I, I was, I would jam it, but I, I didn't know what I was hearing. I just like, I knew I liked it. And I think it made like a big impression oh. on me. And then my mom was like a huge, like music, music lover. And she was showing me the band she was into. And then my brother's, Aiden's dad, my brother's, um, he would show me bands too. Like um, a lot of like punk rock, like um, the Melvins, Misfits, oh. and, you know, it goes, it goes on. So, and then of course, like um, the slap thing, and it's, it sucks to say, but that, like I learned, like uh, first thing I learned was higher ground. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the kind of a cliche thing. A Not lot, a bad. A lot of bass players do it though. Yeah. yeah. So I learned that, and it's like it kind of just kept going. And then uh, I didn't realize I was actually good at slapping. And so like I was jamming with this guy one day, and he was just like, "Man, like you are really fast. Like you slap really yeah. fast." I didn't even know. Like you do until he pointed it out, and I was like, "Damn, okay." And then I kind of it kind of became my thing. Yeah, kind of like to be kind of flashy and you know show off, I guess. They kind of be like, which kind of became my style, like real. But your tonality is so clear, man. Thank you, man. Thank like you. Like the way the way it resonates is so it's so interesting. Like you do, you remind me of Rod Diaz, um, mm -hmm. uh, Trujillo, dude. I mean, and, oh, but yeah. I'm 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 not even thinking Metallica era. I'm thinking uh, infectious grooves. And, yeah. and I hear that in you guys, man. So one of my favorite mm -hmm. is, uh, is Sarsipius's art. And I was like, man, that sounds like that, that attack you have. Cause you have, but it's like, it's your attack is. And then not only for you, but for the whole band, your attack mm -hmm. is a heavy one, but your mm -hmm. sound isn't always metal. Yeah. Like yeah. the attack is there, but it's almost like progressive jazz, dude. It's wild. Oh yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Totally. My brother, he, he throws these like jazz chords in the music too. And sometimes it like blows my mind. I'm like, I don't know what to do on it. Like, you know what I mean? There's so many different ways I can go with it, but I just try and hold down the groove and, and be aggressive. Honestly, that's what I really try and do. Make sure that me and the drummer awesome. are just locked in and, and tight and real, like I said, real percussive, real aggressive. Like one of the biggest influences too, like my mom showed me um, a band called Faith No More. I'm sure you all know Faith No More, but oh. they're like a big influence. Billy Dude. Gould is a huge influence. Billy on Gould, me. man. Yeah. 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 For sure. Because now I so can, like, Flea, now I just hear, uh, what's that one? It's a boom, boom. And it has that oh, yeah. synthesizer. I can Falling hear it pieces. in my head. Yeah. Falling to pieces. That's it. Yeah. Falling to pieces. Mm -hmm. I can hear it. This that low. Yeah, dude, I can hear that in your playing too. So I you... think, yeah, I think that was a huge influence on me. Like, like, yeah, I said I knew I liked the sound of it, but I was, a, I was so little. But I, that's right. what my mom was jamming. So I think but it, it made, made sense to song. you. Like, like, yeah, okay. Instead of like, I want to know this note for note. It's like I feel that note. That's mm -hmm, that's for sure. Oh, that's so cool, dude. And that you can sure. hear that in your guys. Okay, I gotta ask. Where's the where's the uh, where's the name from? Okay, so we used to um, practice. There's a at this um, like a storage unit, and the, it oh, was yeah. actually the where the street was on that store, like where the storage oh, unit so was. Oh, so Donella located. Drive was the yeah. Okay. We would pass that street, and awesome. uh, we thought the name was cool because it was kind of vague enough to where mm -hmm. um, you didn't know what kind of music it would it would be. You know what I mean? Like we don't want something like. And, and that's a I thing thought, you, you with that kind of band. I was you weren't expecting what you listened to. Yeah, especially with yeah. Simeon Transmission, which is mm -hmm. utter beautiful chaos and the most yes. seizure-inducing video I've seen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what's funny is like I was watching it and like I didn't even think about that part, 
And the guy who was editing it, he was like, hey, man, you should probably put a warning on it, like, <laughs> just in case. And I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Like, I'm just there, like, looking, like, dead at the screen, like, this is awesome. And then I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I should put that. I didn't even think about I that. I put you guys, <laughs> I had you guys on, and then I had Mudvayne's Dig, and then I had nice. Enter Sandman. So it was yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, not stop flashing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like, are you okay? <laughs> it's like, I gotta stop. Wait a minute. <laughs> I did That's have that, well done. That, that well, fine bit of That's a killer, work. killer thing. Yeah, it, it definitely was. That's so awesome. tell me a little bit about some of the themes and lyrics and uh, um, kind of an inspiration behind mm. this latest single, Simeon Transmission, since we're talking about it. Oh, my brother, he he's like turning into like a. He's turning into a great lyricist. Like he went from pretty much hating writing lyrics. You know what I mean? It was like a task. It was like homework assignment. He hated it. <laughs> now okay. he like he really looks forward to like making like the vocal patterns and the melodies and hooks and stuff. And but um yeah, that song's just pretty much about like I guess a mixture of things. I, I think we kept it pretty vague, but I, I what I think it's about is like kind of like that self doubt. You know what I mean? Um, mm. kind of taking over and maybe losing sight in, I guess, society and in your own personal things, I guess. That's, that's what I interpret that as, as like, kind of losing sight and um, kind of having that self-doubt. That's what I think it's about. Yeah, and it's got a great bloody sound to it. Jim um, mentioned a couple mm. of bands, and I also was like, the your, your brother has this um, great delivery, as you can kind of mention. Like, we were listening to it, and you go, yeah. um, and same with the instrumentals, um, yourself and Stephen there. You kind of have this sound where it's like you can hear – the post hardcore in it, but you can also hear these metal influences and then the rock. And exactly. then your brother has a delivery that yeah. you can kind of, I was getting like um, at the drive in Mars Volta kind of feels off. Exactly. Of this, yes. this track as exactly. well. Yeah. That those are his favorite bands of all time. Oh, nice. Mars Volta oh, wow. at the drive in. Yeah. Nailed but, it. So, <laughs> so we definitely weren't far off the mark with that that cool. track there as well. We so, literally were talking about this like a half hour ago. Yeah, so, so yeah. Cool. at least I know I'm somewhere around the money. I'm doing something right with this music media yeah. gig. So Correct. tell me a little bit about how you feel your sound has evolved because it certainly has, and we did kind of touch on mm -hmm. it, but I'd hear to know in detail how you think your sound has evolved since your debut album, Anomalous. Um. Like I said, I think the songs were um, a little more to the point in the beginning, like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, outro, you know. But now we're, what we do, we try and change up the structures, not keep it so, um, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. We try and like kind of take you on like a journey almost, like yeah. intro. And then like we try and even switch up like the verses even. Like uh, I don't know if you heard our song, Keep You Waiting. Yep. Um, mm. the verse, the first verse is completely different from the second verse. It almost takes you, it's like a almost could be a different song. You know, and so we try and just switch up the way we arrange our music. I'd say that's probably the biggest thing is like we don't want to keep it so like predictable, but we still we still we want it to be it. unpredictable, but still have yeah. it memorable and catchy and yep. hooky. Yeah, yeah well that so that's keep like you, our ultimate thing. That keep you waiting. Keep um that one mm -hmm. dropped after the bloomer album i believed and that was kind of the mm -hmm. album where aiden kind of stepped up onto vocals and i feel like mm. you kind of oh, yeah. guys really started hitting your straps mm -hmm. there you know you already had it together musically it just felt like that once the the aiden stepped in there and kindly you know we're a three-piece and he's gone to form that that the band i felt like had reached a point you know, creatively and mentally where you guys are okay. And this is where we're going to fucking make a real push at this. We're going to kind of step up oh, yeah. our game a little bit. You can hear it kind of in the, the production, everything was great before, but you hear it in the sound and the production and with Aiden kind of coming in on lyrics, it's like, okay, then we're finally onto something. We've, we've pegged in that sound there. Did you guys feel that as well when you like made that bloomer album? Was that something oh. that was going through your head? Yeah. Definitely. You know, you know, what's crazy about that um, whole whole time period was we were in the studio recording Bloomer. But as we were recording Bloomer, we were writing Ozel. Yep, like yep. We were already like ahead of Follow ourselves. Up. Like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. While we were recording the current stuff. So we were like, as we we're recording, we we're like, we need to outdo ourselves. We need to get better. We need, You know, we need to we're going to involve different people, you know, um, than we were working with during Bloomer. Like, like mm -hmm. there's a guy we worked with. His name is Chris Mora. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him, 
but um he's done a lot of stuff he like probably the biggest band he works for is a uh, upon a burning body yep um he, he works with upon a burning body fan. and he works huge for, uh, fan of Kim those guys, man. yeah so he he engineers all their stuff he does you, like I think I want to say he, boys are hard man <laughs> oh yeah Dracula but no San Antonio you know what's funny I was watching a uh an old YouTube video um I someone reposted it it was like from San Antonio in 1992 like a local news um and it was basically saying how San Antonio was the metal capital of the 80s yes sir. And, and the whole and the whole um um the whole uh segment was about Metallica coming to town and it was like broke all these records and this is like 1992 so yeah. we're a metal town. Texas is metal. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Didn't mean to interrupt. I'm yeah. sorry. Excuse me. No, I would have no, no, cool. cool. been like, they're going on about San Antonio metal, and then they start talking about Metallica. It's like, fuck that. We've got a lot of ton of great bands. San Antonio in that area in general has a fucking ton of great bands. Oh, yeah. Man. It must have been it, up around there. And what's the, the what's the live scene like now? The local scene? like yeah. I would say right now the local scene is like, a lot of, a lot of thrash metal hardcore is like huge here um and then yeah yeah and then the traditional metal will never go away you know what i mean like Indeed. judas priest plays like two nights here in a row you know what awesome. i mean um well like we just did a we just did like i actually do a backstage catering and hospitality and uh we did corn oh. and uh i actually met head uh from corn okay and uh and it was so a sold out show you know what i mean like People show up here for their for their metal for sure, for damn sure. Dude, you guys should do um, well, want Jai. I I've been there before. Did, have you guys ever done Austin? Have you ever done South by Southwest? Oh yeah, we've done South by um. Okay. Almost every year, um, we haven't done like Jai. We gotta go. We gotta go. Yet. We'll roadie for them and we'll go <laughs> to South by Southwest for these guys. Yeah, it's cra- it's crazy. It's it's like pretty chaotic. The whole mm-hmm. whole thing. You know, I remember like walking around like. Like um with my big SVT uh head, my Ampeg, like walking around Sixth Street, going from venue to venue with my yeah. gear. It, it's and there's like thousands of people and it, it's ca- complete chaos. It's yeah. it's crazy. Oh, crazy. Yeah. So I did mention you guys have um got that new album Axon, which is due to drop early 2025. Can you share some insights mm-hmm. kind of into the creative process and the songwriting process about this uh, behind this album? Okay, yeah, this is probably I. I will admit it's probably our wildest album. Good. Like, okay, so what you're getting, what you got with Simeon, the next single we're dropping, it's completely different. Imagine like, um, like my brother's been comparing it to Mars Volta meets Megadeth. If that makes oh. sense. Oh, yeah. It and, does after hearing like you, you guys I like yeah, with so, this single. Mm-hmm, so we, the guy who did the artwork for, um, for Simeon, the artist, his name is, he goes by Gun Show. He actually made a bunch of props for that for our next video, and um, like like it's like weird like like the first prop off the bat, it's like this like weird like headpiece that goes my brother's head, and it looks like something you'd see on Yo Gabba Gabba or something like something like <laughs> you remember that like T P. Yes, I, I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. coming back. Yeah. yeah, so like it's like the video is gonna be it's it, it revolves around this character called the Rift Creeper that we came up with, and uh, okay. he's just like this scumbag kind of musician. He he puts on the headpiece and he ends up going to get some beer and he's throwing up and then he goes to the strip club and then he wakes up in like the forest like it's like this whole yes. crazy store with props and we got like a and then the the shots of us playing we're playing on the strip club stage and there's a girl dancing the whole time like it's gonna be and then we got this wrestler in it he he throws my brother through like a table like Fuck yeah it's, <laughs> it's gonna be insane like so that's that's one song like that's the next single uh and then uh that one's called mindless embryonic and that's we're actually dropping that december 4th and then um yeah the next couple songs like like every song kind of has and it's funny too because actually ruben from upon i i sent him the song and he's like you guys always take us on a journey man like <laughs> like and uh yeah that's what we try and do like like in the song after that third track it's called Ter lingua and it's almost like a uh like i said almost like a funky like heavy red hot chili pepper song minus anthony oh, kiedis cool. you know what i mean like yeah thanks i like you yeah yeah so like yeah so it's like that style and then and we came up with this like kind of doomy it's like we, we used to call it doom dance it starts off you think it's like a mm. 
like could be like a sword song or something. It starts off like real heavy and doomy, Black Sabbath. Then it goes into like like a funky oh, verse. Like, I'm I telling you, like sword. we, yeah, it, it's it's insane. You know what I mean? And then we have like a song that could be like on Incubus' Science album, and then uh, we close out the record. Actually, we have a, a song before that. It's straight up like a Megadeth song. Imagine like a Megadeth song with like a mud vein, like a Death Blooms bridge, if that makes Ooh, sense. Beautiful. <laughs> and then we close beautiful, it out with like sir. a trip hop song. And then, oh, I'm oh, sorry, I forgot. I we, like have, we have an instrumental track that uh, we got a saxophone player um, to play on. So oh. there's a saxophone solo on the record. You've sold me. So, that's, that's just yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, perfect yeah, night yeah, out. Yeah, Anyone, good. any we're girls good. watching this? He just described my perfect <laughs> night out. Chili peppers, <laughs> yeah. <and> Kiedis, <laughs> yes, fucking kick-ass, funky bass. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sold. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna be insane. You. Like we're gonna either like uh, people are gonna love it, or they're gonna be like, "What were they on?" <laughs> <laughs> so who done the production? That leads to the who, best stuff, dude. That's it. Who handled the production and the mixing of this, man? Ah. So actually, we actually recorded um, at Cibolo Studios here in San Antonio yep. with our, our good friend Landis. He actually uh, played drums on uh, Evil Salsa, that track Evil Salsa, and yeah. uh, and a couple other tracks. Yeah, he played, he played drums on that, but he owns a studio. So we went to his studio, and we were there for like a week or so. We did guitars, mm-hmm. bass, drums, and like, I think it was like four days. And then uh, and then uh, right now, Chris Mora, um, our, our buddy Chris Mora, like I said, who does Fawn and and Kim Dracula and some others. He's done work for like a bunch of people, like Peso Bluma, um, 21 Savage. Like he's has a wide range of people he works with. Yeah. Um, he's mixing it right now. And uh yeah, man. I mean, that's pretty much who we work we work with since, you know, since we've been since since o- Ozel actually, just those two people. You know, we have a pretty good foundation, talented yeah. people. Um the Civil o Studios is an amazing studio. The drum set's amazing. Like it's just a legit badass studio. And then, like I said, Chris is a mixing mastering genius. Yeah, as uh, I mentioned, I the production's been unreal, man. From what I've been it's very hearing, dense. very dense, yeah. very thick. Thank you. Now we're sure. we're very lucky, and, and we're lucky that you know they're big f- fans of us too. They support us. You know what I mean. We're we're just lucky that they're on our side, honestly. Hell For yeah! Real. So well, we are too, brother. So thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I did yeah, mention you absolutely. played with some some big bands and you've you know played mm-hmm. at some good shows, some sports. Do you have any good memorable moments or anything that's kind of stuck out in your mind so far from some of these shows? Or um, oh yeah, for sure. Probably we played this festival in town. Um, it used to happen here, it was called the River City Rock Fest. It was like a whole bunch of bands, like um, it was Kid Rock, the Deftones. Um nice like 12 foot ninja like a whole whole bunch of bands it was kind of yes. like they were trying to i guess it was like a rock Oklahoma type festival like uh louder than life it, they were trying to be like that oh yeah and uh it, it doesn't uh they actually stopped it a few years ago which sucks but um yeah we played that festival and like we we met chino the old we met the whole band but they were on their way out or something and we kind of just like crossed paths with them um and you know we got to talk to chino and then probably what's up with what's the next one um and i oh and then i met eddie van Velen yeah. randomly oh, oh, here in town. that's cool <laughs> like, yeah and then uh yeah he, it was really cool i, I honestly couldn't even talk I couldn't even think straight I'm like, ah, nice to meet you. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was pretty pretty insane and then um what else what else? i was trying to think and then oh and then this last tour we went on tour with dead poet society and yeah, and that was just like a, it was it was awesome. It was awesome, man. Like, there those guys are blowing up right now, and it's mm-hmm. crazy to see like where they came from, because we played with them in Austin to maybe ten people, and now they're wow. playing, you know, download next year. They play wow. louder than life this year, like, you know what I mean? And and they took us yeah. out last year, uh, twice, um. And and, and the, yeah, then like I said, they're blowing up right now. Like those shows were, if they weren't sold out, they were pretty pretty close to being sold out. And that they're, definitely they're awesome. I dead part of I've been getting a bit of their PR Ooh. stuff as well. Of like unreal bloody yeah band, yeah like. yeah. They're it, it's it's crazy. Like I said, it's crazy to see man. Like like um, we play like I said, we play with them to, to nobody. You know what I mean? Like oh, the promoter yeah. in Austin was like, hey, this band's coming through. You want to jump on? I but was you like, never know, I just man. Play in you Austin. never. 
That's you so cool. Know. Like, yeah. You yeah, know, so that, I would say those are my favorite shows where it's like mm-hmm. you're playing your guts out, and mm-hmm. it's like, man, I saw them. I just saw them down in Nagadoshis, and they yeah. just rip, dude. Before they even hit that tour within yeah. Flames and Mammoth EVH, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's but that's you'll say it begins exactly. Yeah, 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 dude. Something that sucks about that show is I actually fell off the stage. <laughs> so you did? About, uh, hey, I fell off the stage. Uh, I was like headbanging, rocking out too hard, and I, I like went past the monitor, and boom! Uh, I was pretty yes. embarrassed. <laughs> no, but he didn't care. No, like, that's care. That, no yeah. dude, that's throwing your spirit and your soul yeah. into what you're playing. Don't ever well, apologize for that. No, and that's the thing too. Like you got to get your your live performances down pat. I think, isn't it? And like, if you yeah. really want to be a live band that's playing to these audiences, you got to put on a good show to the same as yeah. ten people as you would to bloody a thousand. You know, I know. Right. Yeah, dude, you got to sell it. Right. You got to sell it. I've seen Airborne. It. Yeah. Fucking at the local pub years ago, man, and he was jumping around, climbing up on fucking everything back then, dude. That he's doing now at big sold out stadium performances, but mm-hmm. over in Europe. But oh, then yeah. you mentioned they come back to Australia and they can barely sell a fucking pub show. Sometimes it's a weird old scene. Yeah. I'm sure you find that yeah. in America sometimes as well. The the dichotomy compared to the fucking European <laughs> shows compared to the Aussie and the American shows. Sometimes it's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Right. Oh yeah, no, for sure, man. For sure, dude. Do you That's have my any? Next goal, go to Europe for sure. Oh man, that would be unreal. Do you have any live shows planned for the round out of the year or to start the new year to support the album? Well, that um, yeah, announced. we're we're definitely um gonna have some kind of album release show yeah. for sure. Um, but right now we're gonna run out the year. We have two shows. Uh, one's in Austin, and uh, one is uh just a local San Antonio show. Um, and then like I said, just play it by ear. Hopefully work out a tour, we'll jump on a tour. And that after we put out the record, that's, that's pretty much the goal. Yeah. And, and those just the local shows happen. are the best fucking shows, Andrew. Don't you know Dude. it, man? You go there, you Insane. catch up with a whole bunch of bands that you know, a whole bunch of friends. Um, those just yeah. local shows are the best place to catch bands. Mm-hmm. You know, and hang yeah, out with them, sure, yeah. like the drowning pools and everything before mm-hmm. they start making a big, get them know then see them at those just local shows. Cause you're going to have, the yeah. best fucking time that is for sure best it's place true. people can get along and support you guys i know these are on spotify but you have somewhere where people that actually want to throw down some support and get behind you guys like a web page oh. or physicals what's the deal we're we're everywhere man you, you can get our stuff um anywhere you get your music honestly like you know apple wherever and then um band camp is probably like where we'll probably get the most you know definitely hit up our band camp yeah, yep. and that's where you can get you know the all, all of our music. We have some stuff on there that's not even on Spotify. So yeah. if you want to dig deep and dive deep in us, like you can. Yes. You know some of that stuff's like old. Like yeah. you know, what I mean, like doesn't matter. So it's, it's, definitely, it's the best fucking there. place. Like I'm, I hate to break oh, yeah. it to you people, but like the Spotify is only making the fucking corporations rich off the backs of bands who really want to support the bands. You got to get behind pre-order their albums, go to their shows. Even if you just like the digital, dude, I've got like 800 plus digital albums I've bought over on my band Same. camp, dude, because the sound quality yeah. is great. You can't fuck Yeah, with it's better it. too, yeah. Oh, dude, it's it is. unfucking real, man. I can download the top quality for my computer straight from my band camp account. Can't go fucking oh, yeah. wrong. And you're supporting the scene as well. Look, this has been an absolute bloody pleasure, Andrew. Hopefully get to chat to you thank again you, next year when the album drops so we can talk more oh, about that as you. well. Um, do you have any last words, shout outs, thank yous, or anything else you'd like to add in there, mate? Uh, just please uh, check us out. Check out our music video. You know, Stream us. Wherever you find your music, we're there, man. Just look us up. Jam our music, please. That's all I can say. And follow us on Instagram, oh, yeah. TikTok, you, you name it, we're there. You can find us. Just look at look our band name. We're there. There you go. You For heard sure. it there from Andrew. Everybody go grab some Danella Drive. The latest single is Simeon Transmission. Did drop a couple of weeks ago, but they have a whole bunch of music they've dropped, including Fortress, Evil Salsa, and Vessels, Ozel Bloomer, and a whole fucking bunch more. Go get it. Chuck it into the stereos. Crank it up really bloody loud, because what? The neighbors are going to want to hear it too. Cheers, mate. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you so much, man. Thank you. Oi, you're tuned in to Dry That Aussie Metal, guys, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. 
so you don't miss any of his sick content. And remember, stay brutal, you legend.